Thank you for all the moms. Everything that you do, we can't keep up with you. Man, I tell you, I tell you that. We cannot word and women. They're awesome.
many people know that Jesus loves you? I mean, how much do you really know how much he really loves you? You know how much sometimes people love themselves? Not even close. You know how much your mother loves you? Not even close. She, and she loves you. Oh, it's a good mother love. He loves us so much that he's willing and patient and waiting for us. And we have our, our the things that we have to get rid of, and we know. Nobody has to come, so we know it. He tells us all the time. He says, look, but if you let that go, So he loves us, a patient father. Think of that patient father as walking with you. Amen?
who you are, where you've been, what you've done. He loves you unconditionally and he loves us all the same.
and uh, she just would not stop. And now he's learned to step up, step up on the, the little handrails and hold on to it. And we got this little device where you can be in the living room, but you can look at it, watch it on video, and you can talk into it. And so I would say, Carter, lay down. I hate straight loud. He looked around. And I'd say, Carter, lay down. It's bedtime. He was searching for me. And he was searching. He could hear my voice. I want you to listen. He could hear my voice, but he could not see me. And when I went around that room in the dark, and he seen my face, he went ballistic happy. He started jumping like it was 9 o'clock in the morning, like it was time to get up and start playing. He was glad to see his daddy, because he was a little fearful in the dark. And he just got overwhelmed with joy. I want you to know that same feeling or even greater feeling is when you're seeking after Christ. And you feel like you're in that dark place. And you feel like everything is coming against you. I want you to know it is not in his thought process to ever quit loving you. You understand what I'm saying? He is not designed. Jesus is not designed to ever imagine quit loving you. He's going to love you. I don't care how disobedient or how great you are. He's going to love you. You need to understand that. Because I think sometimes that we get into ourselves so much that we forget about the love of Christ. We forget how great He is. How wonderful He is. How transformational He is. And that He's got us. I think we forget that. We get so caught up in ourselves in our days. I need you to understand that this morning. And I promise you this, when you come out of that dark place and you really listen and you really meet Jesus, you're going to go ballistic. You're going to go crazy, like awesome crazy. And you're just going to fall on your knees like, I've been such a horrible son. I've been such a horrible dog. I'm this big person. And then Jesus picks you up and says, that's okay, son. I'm going to love you from this point on. You understand that? I don't think the human mind, unless you take time to sit down and think about it, you can see that in your thinking. He loves you regardless. Religion tells you He doesn't love you because you do A, B, C, and D. He tells you. He doesn't. Religion says He doesn't love you because you've done A, B, and C. But well, that's a lie. Because my Bible says He loves me unconditionally. There's no conditions to His love in me. When I get to know Him, guess what? There's some growth conditions. Amen? You hear this morning, I just want to speak just a quick moment on your heart this morning. Maybe a mother that's here this morning is struggling. She feels unworthy. Amen? She feels like she's not done a great job. Or maybe she feels like she's doing all she can do. Or maybe she's doing an excellent job. Or maybe you put this condition on yourself. I want you to do one thing with that. I want you to squash it. I want you to squash it. Because God ain't looking for you to be awesome moms. And ain't, ain't looking for you to be an awesome woman. He's looking for you just to be. You hear what I'm saying? He's looking for you just to be. And then as you trust Him, He grows you. I know it goes against every little author you've ever read. How to be the greatest mom in ten days. How to be the greatest this in five days. But I'm telling you, Jesus just wants you to be. And He'll take you from there. Trust Him with it this morning. Maybe you're here this morning you don't know Christ as a personal Savior. I don't know. I feel in my spirit maybe it's a little cloudy in there this morning. I guess, can I be transparent this morning? Is that alright? I love to be real. Amen. I, I don't mind standing for my beers and live real. It's just okay with me. I feel like I'm hurting because I know a few situations. You know, we got hit with a a lady missing this morning after her kids got baptized and they just trying to tap. And then I got a friend that's mom's down with cirrhosis of the liver and the, the uh, 
the, the chemicals in her body is making her hallucinate. And it seems to all be hitting like today. Like, wow. And I don't know your situation, but I know that God does. Can we just pray? Come to a court, one court this morning. Amen. Can we come with a clear mind and a clear heart believe it this morning? Amen. Just lift your hands forward. I don't know what your situation is, but here's how I believe. I believe if you confess it out, and I don't mean in your thinking, but I believe if you say it. I ain't saying you got to say it to me. I'm just saying you got to say it to Jesus. And I want you to whisper it out or shout it out, whatever it is. Right now, go ahead. Whatever that prayer request, I want you to shout it out or whisper it out of your mouth. Go ahead. And right now, we're going to come to agreement that God's going to do something today. Father God, right now, in the name of Jesus, no greater name than the name of Jesus this morning. We just lift up your name, you Lord. Father, oh, how he loves us. Oh, how you love us. It's hard for me to comprehend how you can constantly keep loving us, but yet you do. So, Father, I come to the name, the only name that I know to come to, and that's the name of Jesus. And I come under the blood, Father God, the covering of your blood, the healing of your blood this morning. And right now, it says if one puts a thousand to flight and two puts ten thousand this morning, Father, we're going to flood you with these prayer requests this morning. And I come with my brothers and sisters in Christ this morning. And we're going to ask for healing. Complete healing. Whatever form that may take, Holy Spirit, it doesn't matter to us. It's that your will be done. Yes. So, Father God, also right now, in the name of Jesus, I ask for that spirit of reconciliation. That, that forgiveness. Father God, I pray that whatever heart or party that's going through that in their life right now, I pray that they will humble themselves before the Lord, turn from their sin, and walk back to you and get that forgiveness so they can go forward. And Father God, I pray for restoration. The restoring of the families this morning, Father God. The restoring of the hearts. And Father God, I also sense loneliness this morning. They lost their mom and that used to be the only person they used to talk to. And now they feel as if they have really no one to talk to to understand them. God, I pray you fill that void for them this morning. No longer you'll be in that sad spot, but you'll always remember how great of a woman they were. And the mark they made in their lives, they'll maybe never forget. Father, I ask all this in Jesus' name this morning. We believe it. Your word says this to come to me without wavering in what you ask for. So Father, right now, I come with my brothers and sisters not wavering. We say thank you, Jesus. Thank you for healing our prayers. Thank you for answering them. Thank you for touching them. Thank you for doing a work in us. We give you all the praise and all the glory and honor. Because Father, we love you. We love you. And I love you, sweet Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Give God praise this morning. Woo! Come on. Good worship this morning. Always good worship. I pray you get in that, in that personal space with the Lord when you do that. You don't have to be in here. Praise God. You do that in the corner, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, we men, we do it in the bathroom, right? That's just what we do. Amen. I'm excited this morning. I'm doing a traditional... I know I'm going to blow your mind this morning. I am doing a traditional sermon this morning. Praise God. You know what? I'm going to deal with mothers this morning. I don't know. I just sit on my porch all morning long and ask the Holy Spirit what to talk about, what to talk about, what to do, the heart. <clears throat> God said, deal with the mothers. So praise God, I got some things I want to share. I'm not going to be very long because I want you to spend some good quality time with your loved ones today. Right now, we're going to take my offer. Amen. Stand to your feet this morning. We've got some music.
you know uh, what God's laid on your heart. Greg's here. The big basket's for our uh, offering. The small bucket is for our children's church. And also our box over here is for India. For those that don't know, we support India every month. Still getting the gospel to them over the internet, and they're still trailblazing for the kingdom of God. That's awesome. You're a part of that. All right? So whatever it is, come on, bring your office this morning. Lift your hands for us. Say, Father, we trust in you. Thank you for everything. Thank you for allowing me to be able to give. Because I know it comes from you. I love you, sweet Jesus. Amen. Amen. Come on, Karen. Amen. I want all the mothers. Amen. All the mothers. Stay standing this morning. Come on, mothers. Oh, yeah. That's you. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. All you mothers stand up this morning. All uh, uh, children's church uh, kids, the small ones stay out here, and the, if the older ones want to, you can, because I'm going to be very short this morning. I'm going to be very brief. Amen. This is a little tough of appreciation to you as a mom. Amen. We know if we give you flowers. That you'll give it to your husbands and they'll have to go out and play it in the yard. You know, it's a process. It's a process. Let's be honest. It's a process. But we just want to say thank you for everything you moms do. I want to pray for you right now. Father God, I thank you for my mothers out here. I thank you for the mothers they've become, who they are, what they're doing, Father God. I ask you to watch over and protect them. Even greater things, even greater ministries, even greater blessings come out of them. Even greater encouragements come out of them, Father God. And we give you all the praise and all the glory and all the honor. We love you, sweet Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I don't do the whole metal. That thing scares me a little bit. I ain't going to lie. It just makes me feel like y'all think I'm a preacher or something. I don't want y'all to do that. It already scares me when people go and say, Pastor Randy, I kind of cringe like, ooh, ooh, I'm not worried about that. Ooh. <clears throat> this one I want to talk to you, your mothers this morning. A little bit about uh, how to love your mothers. Amen? It's not one of those messages where uh, we're going to spend a lot of time thinking about your sins, thinking about things that's going on in your life, but I want you to think about how you're doing something to the ones you say you love. Amen? People say all the time, somebody give me a water or can't give me a water. I think my voice is gone. People say all the time, I love ice cream. How many people love ice cream? In the same voice, you know what they say? I love Jesus. Now, I love ice cream and I love Jesus. Amen? When it comes out, it sounds the same, right? But when, when we're saying it, does it mean the same? 
Does it mean the same? No, it does. I hope it doesn't. I love Jesus a whole lot more than I love ice cream. Amen. I mean, I, mean, I don't know. Wait a minute. If it's good homemade strawberry ice cream, I'm probably good with that. Amen. But not more than Jesus, praise God. The reason I say that is because, you know, a lot of times we think about our mothers and we think about how much we take advantage of them sometimes. That's right, Mom. I'm saying that, you know. I hope if we're recording this morning, I hope I'm going to tell her to her face, you know, Mom, you know, I've took advantage of some moments you've given me. Amen. And let's be honest, moms. Have your kids done that? That you've took notice? Yes, they have. You don't have to be that humble. <clears throat> and the crazy thing is, is that you never told them. You know why you never told them? Because you love them. You don't want to hurt them. Amen. Amen. So I want to talk to you this morning real briefly in John 19, 26 and 27. Now this is during the crucifixion. Or during the process of it. And when Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciples whom he loved standing by, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. And then he said to the disciples, Behold your mother. And from that hour, that disciple took her to his own home. I want to talk to you this morning about a responsibility that goes above and beyond what you can ever imagine. A job that is harder than we men could ever fathom in our thinking or even do. I'm going to be honest this morning. My wife's going to love this. Well, she's probably going, yeah, I'm loving you being honest. No, that's not what I'm saying. <laughs> this morning I said, you know, it's Mother's Day. It comes around once a year, right? So we men kind of do things like, do things we normally wouldn't do. So I said, you know, I enjoy cooking. Everybody knows that. Praise God, I like it. So I cooked breakfast. And I said, this morning, it's Mother's Day. I'm going to give Carter a bath. I'm going to get ready. I'm going to study. And I'm going to get everything together. And all she's going to have to do is just do her. That's all she's got to worry about. Just, you know, one time out of the 365 days, you know, you you just you get your one day, girl. I'm not going to lie. And it could be from yesterday because we did play out in the hot sun. I'm wore out. I thought I had it what it took to put all that together. And I'm not talking like in like three or four hours. I'm talking about I can do this in like two hours. And I'll be good. No. I told her, I was like, son, you're wearing me out. And then the Lord hit me and said, do you realize that every day that your wife does the same thing and goes to work? <laughs> and I was like, "Woo!" I sometimes take advantage of the situation. It's tough. It's tough to fight the little one in the bathtub because you know he's older now and he wants to splash and we look like we've been at a water park how we get out, you know. It's tough to try to cram food down his throat because, you know, he wants to play with it and stick his fingers in it. You try to get clothes ready. And I've never really, I've always just done it. Never thought about it. But now when I thought about it this morning, I thought, whew, you ladies, y'all got it going on. I mean, y'all are stronger than I could ever imagine. Not only, not only do you take the time to notice your man, but you took the time to do all the other 50 other things you do out throughout the day, and the children, and do it with compassion. <laughs> the man's going, oh, my wife ain't compassionate. <laughs> Amen. She is. You just aggravate her. Just like that. Girl. And I want to say thank you for that. Thank you, my wife, for being a great new mother. She's done a phenomenal job. Thanks to my mom that goes above and beyond. <clears throat> I want to talk to you this morning with the emphasis of what Jesus was saying to his mother and what Jesus was saying to his disciples. Here Mary was at the crucifixion from the foot of the cross. 
And I can only imagine how Mary felt as he, she began to look up her son on the cross, but knowing deep in her heart that he had to be there. But as a mother, as a fleshly mother, that great compassion that she wanted to go, to go up there and take him down and, and nurture him back to good health and nurture him back to life and take care of him and was not able to do. And when her son looks down from the cross and said, Mom, these are your sons. And looks to the disciples who he was calling his sons and says, Disciples, this is going to be your mom. I can only imagine the great intense desire and heart to say, praise God, I get to do this again. I get to take care of kids more, kids with a great joy in her heart, but yet hurting because her own son was on the cross. I know I kind of feel a little bit about her taking on that as a personal thing to me because my mom adopted me at age four, three or four years old. Amen. I was adopted from a really uh, different situation in my life, an abusive one. Me and my sister were both little red-headed step-kid children. And my mom and dad are black-headed, and my two brothers are black-headed, and we always have to go through that whole process every time. You know, I've told you before. Amen. Why are those your kids, and why are they both red-headed and all black-headed? Well, let me tell you the story. But my mom took, took on that responsibility. She said out, out loud in her voice one time, she said, I seen these kids and I said to the Lord, Lord, I want these kids. Is there any way I could ever have just a relationship with them and begin to build a relationship with us? No, not knowing that we were in a bad situation at the time. Came along and built a relationship. She was in college, finishing up her degree to be a teacher. She was going to keep going through college and keep working, was dating my dad at the time they had got married and knew in her heart that she was going to adopt us one day. Just knew it. I was in such a bad situation at that point in time with my biological father that he had wrote a letter to, to my mom, Carolyn, and stated in the letter, I'm just not able to care for these kids anymore. Can you take these kids? Can you care for them? As a young woman who just been through college and was trying to start a career or wasn't even married yet, said yes. I'd be willing to take on that responsibility. Not only did she take on the responsibility, but she also had to convince the man whom she was wanting to marry that you're going to have two kids right off the bat. Are you ready for this? And he said yes. Me and my sister both was in my mom and dad's wedding. After they got married and just got settled, we went to the courthouse and we made it all final. And from that point in time in their life, they took on the major responsibility of growing us and teaching us and molding us. Now I can tell you two, two things about my parents. One, my dad was a disciplinary man. And my mom was a very compassionate woman. They both drove with the same heart but different ways. My dad drove with discipline, which was love. My mom drove with compassion, which was love. And they both thought they were doing the same thing, but it seemed different in my eyes. Because I'm going to tell you this. I don't know. I'm sure my other brothers and my sister love my mom, but I can tell you this. I finally have known when I got adopted what a true love from a woman, from a, from a mom felt like. Because I had never felt that before, ever to that moment. I couldn't tell you before what that felt like. I've never seen a woman. i seen my biological father had many women. Some which abused us, threw rocks at us, locked us in closets. It was just horrible. That's all I remembered of a woman as I was growing up and I was a toddler. And I couldn't remember anything good about it until I met my mom. And she was the most compassionate, loving, and understanding woman you could ever meet. And she took on that responsibility. And she did it finally. And as we grew up, she began to teach us the values. And they began to grow in life. Man, it would become a wonderful life. A wonderful transition in our lives. And then we go on and have two other... She goes up and have two more kids, or my two brothers. And the Lord just does amazing work in them. The reason I tell you this is because sometimes you may, not, you may say, well, I don't have children. I'm not a mother. I'm telling you, there's kids all around that need love and compassion to be picked up. 
You say, well, I don't feel like I've been a great mom. I can tell you, it's okay. Now's your chance to be a great mom if you want to be. Do something different with your life. Do something totally different. Have you learned on your way? I hope we all have. Learn how to, to, do, to do things differently, to love differently, to show love differently. Now I want to teach you this morning just a quick, briefly things on how to love your mom that I think we've here forgotten. One major thing I'll tell you about the family that's big to me is that I think we have gotten away from is sitting down at the table and eating together. Yeah. Amen. One thing I'm glad we do here, and not all the time do we ever get to do that a lot with our family, but we do with our church family is the Saturday dinner. But one thing I think we've so fast paced with, with we've forgotten to sit down at the Sunday table and eating together. And taking time and laughing and joking and having a good time. We've just forgotten about that. I want to bring you back into remembrance of some of those traditional things you used to do and why you, you feel a little bit empty now because you've left those traditions. I'm not saying all traditions are great. I'm just saying some are. Some are. Don't throw away all of them because some of them still work. Number one, you need to never quit loving your mom verbally. You hear what I'm saying? I have met so many men and so many women and so many children in, in ministry in general that stand over a grave that stands over a bass. They say, Mom, I love you. Mom, I want more time with you. Mom, I want this. Mom, I want that. And she's gone. Mom, I wish I'd have told you I loved you more. I wish I would have listened more and missed the mark. One thing I'll tell you about my mom that I've learned, I've never, ever stopped telling her I love you out loud. And I can tell you one thing that will happen if my mom was in the building. Before she left this building, she would always grab my face. You can ask my wife. And she's going to kiss both sides of my cheeks and tell me I love you. That's just what she's taught us. Verbally, never quit telling your mom I love you. We all got moments. We all get mad at Adam. They get mad at us. But I can promise you one thing, one, one quality you need to learn from them is that they never stop loving you no matter what. When you think they have, they have it. So never stop telling them you love them. Never get tired of saying I love you, Mom. Kids learn from an example, Dad. When, when the kid is watching you as a husband tell your wife that you love them, guess what they're going to grow up and want to do? They want to say the same things. And that's a very important value. Number two. Love her physically. What? Yes, love her physically. One thing we do in this ministry after we say our prayers, what? We hug. Hug the snot out of your mom. Grab her tight, pull her in, and tell her thank you. Hold her. Hold her. You know what that does to her? The same thing it does to you here on Sunday mornings. It releases stress, anxieties, fears, and questions. You say, well, you know, I've not been on a great relationship with my mom here lately. I, I really haven't had time. <laughs> I really haven't had time to really go see her much. I've just been so busy. I'm not going to say this to get you to do it more. I'm going to say this because it's a reality. Because I see it happen so much. You would rather spend more time with her being gone at the gravesite than when she's alive because you didn't have time. You got to make time to love your mama physically. She needs to see your face. She needs to be embraced with your arms. She needs to be embraced with your, your kiss on the cheek. She needs, to, she needs to feel your hands. She needs to have conversations. She needs this in order to operate. That's the way God's made her. It's a gift in her. She didn't just grow up one day and want to be like that. That's just the way she's meant to be. And she needs you. 
You say, well, I, I, I let her down so much. It don't matter. I can promise you, you can, you can, the Bible says you can cover a multitude of sins by confessing them. And there's no greater person to confess your sins to than your mom. Because she's going to understand and not judge you the most. You know why? Because she's sitting on the edge of her seat going, I want you back. And whatever it may take, I want you back. See, if you think that you're too busy, let me, let me introduce you to a few people right here that's lost their mom. That no longer has their mom with them anymore. And wishing they had an opportunity to share again. That's how important it is. It is breath. It is life. And she desires it from you. So take that moment and don't take it for granted. Granted, You're never too busy. She's always cooking. She's always cleaning. She's always doing things for you that you couldn't even imagine. And I want to tell you, you are in this place today because of a mother or a grandmother in your life. I'm not counting you out, fathers. But I am telling you, we as men are here today because of our mothers have never gave up spite for us spiritually. You're here today because there's a grandmother or mother who went to war in the supernatural to get you to get God, so you get God's attention in your life. You're here today because of that. Don't ever forget it. Mothers are sweet and personal and true. And they have the most compassion. I, I know some would say well, I wouldn't grow up to be a physical hugging family. Well, you know what? When I come to church builders, I wouldn't I didn't grow up to be hugged all the time. And when I got here, I got hugged by Vinny, who had a tattoo on his head with a skull and these earrings, and he didn't only hug me, but yet he kissed me on the cheek. So I don't want to hear about your problems about not wanting to be hugged, okay? That's when I first came. And I kind of stood back like, Mama always warned me about people like that. <laughs> Ended up being a close brother in Christ. Ended up, didn't know what he did at that moment in time in my life. He transformed me on my thinking of how to embrace people. I love to hug people now. I don't know, I still get kissed every once in a while. On the cheek, forehead, you know, it's weird, but hey. Whatever floats your boat. Love her physically. Amen. Oh, here's a good one. I wrote down. Love her patiently. Love her patiently. No position in the physical world compares to the physical, emotional, and spiritual commitment she has in motherhood. The position she has as a mother is so largely, the, the job description is so largely, you couldn't even imagine me. I can't imagine what they have to go through. Do you know that statistically, that, that most moms who, you know when your wife is laying beside you on the bed, you think they're asleep. And it shows that they, they are worse sleepers than we, are, or, than we as men are. You know why? They can't shut their brain off. They've had so much to go on. And then when they get that time to sit there, they can't quit thinking about the baby in the bed or the, or the teenager in this bed. Is he sneaking out the night? Is he not sneaking out the night? Or what's he doing in his room again? They, this process is going on. And they're supposed to sleep because they got to get up this, the next day and do it all over again. So they rest less and go more. You ever thought about that? They rest less and go more. You know what we men do? We tell you wives, I work 15 hours out in the hot sun, but I can't do this no more. You know? It is over. It is over. I just don't know if I can do another day of this. She's like, well, I just carried your baby for nine months. In the summertime, you know, delivery was like June. And it was 102 degrees, and, and, and we still 
cleaned and I still prepared things and I still do that. And you talk about one 15 hour day in the hot sun. Okay. Okay. Do you realize how strong she is? Do you realize what she goes through in her thought process? I'm going to be honest with you, to this moment of me actually taking the time this morning on the porch to, to write some of these things down and, and find them up. I've never took in perspective what you ladies do. And I'm very grateful that I know that the men that sit beside you or your husband that sit beside you, I can tell you right now, he's saying, my wife is a superwoman. Because we know exactly what you ladies do, and I appreciate it. I know they do too. All of you, you know, we had this uh, southern mentality. I had to write this down because I thought, found it to be funny. We have this southern mentality where men say this, and I know you've heard it. Baby, if I ever stop loving you, I'll let you know. Or, you know, if I need to tell you I love you, I'll. If I ever need, need to tell you I love you, I'll tell you. But other than that, you just know I love you. That's not how women work. That's not how mothers work. They need to know that you love them. They need to say it physically. Be patient with them. Amen. As they begin to, when they begin to teach, amen. You know, their teaching mechanisms are totally different from your father. Your father is like this. But your mother is totally different. She's, she's a hands-on and she's very patient because when you mess up at what you do, she begins to teach you at a very patient rate how to do it. Amen? Never, ever put me impatient with your moms. Always. She is tender to our needs and she doesn't take advantage of it. She's always thinking about what she can do next. And yet we get impatient because we have to wait. I love her attentively. What I mean by this is mothers are the number one greatest listeners in the world. And I'm not talking about listeners like a friend. I'm talking about listeners like they're on the edge of their seat and they can't wait to hear what you have to say. Now, here's the honest truth. When I call my mom to have a conversation, it can't, I can't do it during work. Because I can't say one thing. There's 50 things that's got to come out of her mouth to my one thing. Amen? Because she's that much wanting to have that conversation with me. I tell my wife, I'm going to drop the kids off with moms and we'll go, you know, we'll go on our honeymoon thing, get away, and I'll drop them off. But I know if I make eye contact with her, you know, I have to do it to the side. Here's the baby, here's the, here's the bag, there's the walker, you know, food's in there, y'all got this. If I stop and look at her, guess what's going to happen? Hey, son. How you doing? How's everything going? You know, the next thing I know is three hours later. We're sitting there talking. Why? Because she's strung like that. She wants attention. Check this, this stat out. They ask murderers in prison. A murderer in prison was interviewed for his crime. So was his mom. The murderer in prison says, yeah, I, I killed those 39 people. Yes, I chopped them up. The mother of the man, of the, the man that committed the crime was her son. They asked, they asked her, why do you think your son did that? You know what her response was? He's a good boy. He's got a good heart. He just got he got off track a little bit. Something happened. He's a good boy. He's got a good heart. We just got to get him back on track. Yeah. You hear what I'm saying? She won't blast him. He would have to. He's done the crime. Committed 39 murders. She would blast him. She always seen the good in him. She, they always see the good in us. They always want our attention. So be very very humble with that. Give him that attention. Love her generously. I will say this. You can never give your mom too much. You know what I'm saying? You can give your dad a gift. I don't know how your dad is, but I can give my dad a gift. He's like, yeah. 
But I can give my mom a gift. It's like I gave her a million dollars. I love giving her like gifts because she thinks I've done something great. And I know what you're saying. Well, you should give her more because obviously you don't give her that's why she gets so excited. No, she's just that excited. If I can give her a flower, she just goes ballistic. Or a little necklace or a little charm or something. She loves that. Love her generously. Taking care of her some needs. You know what? She's not the only one that needs to hear your stories. Guess what, kids? You need to listen to hers. You need to listen to hers. She's got some things she needs to talk about too. And the last thing I'll talk to you this morning, I'm telling you it's going to be short. I just want to hit some, some very traditional things, I believe. Love her honorably. Always honor your mom. The Bible says, honor the, Exodus 20, 12 says, honor the father and mother so that our days will be long. He says that for a reason. When parents, when a mom and dad becomes parents, there's something genetically that goes off in them that makes them to want to have that relationship with their kids. When something breaks that relationship, they hurt. It tears them down on the inside and they, they don't understand how it can happen, but yet they, the love pushes them through to find out how they can fix it. Dads fix things differently. They're a little bit more disciplined, a little bit more rough around the edges. Moms are more compassionately. They want to say so much and they don't want to fix it for you, but they just love you through it. And I can tell you this. I don't know what your situation is with your parents or grandparents or whoever raised you. I don't know if somebody's left you on a park bench or left you behind. Maybe nobody's took time for you. Maybe you've never ever had parents, but I guarantee you, you're here this morning because somebody has took on a responsibility in your life to show you some kind of love. Don't take that for granted. It is special. It is so, so special. Amen. I know some of you today will, will go visit your mom or your dad at the cemetery because they passed on. I know some of you will go visit a mom or dad, maybe it's not yours, maybe it could be yours today. Here's what I would like for you to do. Here's the challenge. I want you to pull her to the side. I want you to look her in the face. And I want you to love, I want you to say to her, Mom, I don't say this enough. I love you. I'm very thankful for you. And then I want you to give her a big old one of them snot grudging hugs that pull the snot out of her because you squeeze her so hard. And you give her one of those. And only if you're able to do this, you give her a flower or a card, because I can promise you every card you've ever gave your mother over these years, she still has it. And then I want you to, if you're able, cook for her. Fix her plate. Pay for her meal. And tell her how much you appreciate everything she's taught you in life, even though we haven't listened to children. And I can tell you what, that is, that is the most unbelievable gift you could ever give a mother. Is that time. And they love it graciously. Stand to your feet this morning. Again, I'm going to say this again. Go spend time with the ones you love if you're able to today. Maybe you say, uh, I don't really have any relationships. Well, find a woman that's a mother and give her a hug and tell her those things. Amen. Come on, honey. Did you get what I was talking about this morning? Did it make sense to you? Good. Father God, I thank you for this great morning. I thank you for our brothers and sisters in Christ. I thank you for our families. And most of all, I thank you for our mothers. Huh? Man, they have trailblazed the, the way for many of us. And it has gone unnoticed. So Father, I just thank you for, the, for just uh, showing me and showing others that uh, we will not go unnoticed no longer. We love them and we're thankful for them and we're thankful for what they're doing. And thank you for never giving up on us. And uh, we give you all the praise. And Lord, let us have a blessed time together today. And we love you, sweet Jesus. Amen. 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 I love you guys. Spend some time with those mothers today.